Hey, I'm, I'm Robbie Summers and we're here to talk a little bit about the sales process uh, when, when we're actually going through and calling and closing people down. We've got uh, Kimberly uh, Lane here. Kimberly, we smile and wave at the camera. And Troy Olds. Uh, Kimberly and Troy, they're actually doing sales currently with Russell Brunson. And so we're going to talk a lot about the things that they're doing and just the overall sales process that we go through. Now, one of the very first things that happens in the sales process is it's a two-part sale. There's a lot of different reasons that we go through a two-part sale. The biggest reason though is it's the most effective way to actually go through and close down a sale over the telephone. The, the two parts, the setter, what they do is they gather basic information on the prospect, they create a motion uh, with, with the prospect on the phone, and they identify the pain and the goals of that person. Once they've done that, they, they actually get off the phone for a little bit of time. We'll talk about this entire process in a lot of detail, but then we switch it over to the closer. And what the closer's job is, is to magnify the hurt. Uh, Tony Robbins always says, identify the pain, magnify the hurt. And so the closer is gonna magnify the hurt and then actually provide a solution for that prospect uh, as, as they go through the rest of the close. Now, th there's a number of advantages to the two-part close. The very first one is consistency. In almost 20 years of doing sales on the telephone, I've run into a lot of different sales guys. One of the things that a lot of sales guys run into that try to just do a one part close instead of splitting the deals is they'll go through a roller coaster of ups and downs and ups and downs. And as you do a two part sale, it provides a lot of consistency throughout the entire, the entire process. The, the next part is, is it does create uh, an attitude of teamwork with the, uh, with, with the entire team that you're working with. I, I'm a Boise State fan. I don't know if it comes through very well, but I've, I've got my, my orange and my blue here, but that was important to put that in there to, to make sure that, that we're having good teamwork uh, as, as we're working through the process. That teamwork and having that team attitude, so often sales can be such an individual um, thing that, that somebody's working on and that teamwork that you have uh, again, it provides better consistency. And the, the last thing is it also produces longevity of employees, okay? Uh, a, an employee who comes in and just goes in and they set everything and they close everything on their own, that they, they go through the ups and the downs and they don't last very long as a salesperson. And so as, as every single person that I've seen be successful long-term in this industry in 20 years, uh, they're always doing the two-part close they're working with other people, they're creating that teamwork, and it keeps those employees around, those salespeople around, for a long period of time. Now, the script that we're gonna walk through today, there's a lot of different things that happen and take place throughout this script. Uh, a lot of NLP that goes on, uh, and, and a lot of psychology that, that goes on throughout the script. But the basic premise of the entire script is simply this. We wanna take people where they're at help them to understand that maybe that their situation, whether it's their business, whether it's their personal life, whatever it might be, that it's stressful, that it's frustrating, you know, they're pulling their hair out, life is tough, whatever it is. And really getting people to understand that, that gosh, they, they've gotta make some changes. The, the next thing that we wanna do is, is we wanna help them to talk about their goals, where they wanna be, what their vision is, what they wanna accomplish uh, in life, and, and finally, how we can help them with our product to actually bridge that gap from where they're at to where they want to be, that if we provide them with that solution, it makes it possible for us to be able to take somebody and go from, hi, my name's Robbie on the telephone, to an hour to two later, to what credit card do you want to put that on? I, I want, you know, asking them for $8,000, $25,000, $15,000, Whatever the price point is, it allows us to be able to do that because we, we really help them to understand where they're at, where they want to be, and that we've got the product, the solution to help them to achieve that. Now, we're going to start out and we're going to talk, like I said, we're going to go through in a lot of detail throughout the entire set script and also the entire closed script. And so we're, we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about that in each, in the set script, there's four main parts, the introduction, the blast, the probe, and then also the commitments or tying somebody down into actually turning them over to a closer. 
And so we're gonna take some time, we're gonna go through each one of those uh, di different uh, portions of the script. Uh, <clears throat> the, the way that the script starts out, uh, it's, it's a very, very um, non-intrusive script. It's really just sitting down and just finding out where these people are at and, and what they want to accomplish. And I'm going to take Kimberly and we're, we're going to kind of role, role play through this just a little bit. Kimberly is going to be my, my potential prospect um, on the other end of the phone. And we're going to talk a little bit about how the process, how this is supposed to work. And uh, the, the script goes something like this. Hello, this is, uh, hello, is Kimberly there? This is she. Kimberly, this is Robbie. I'm calling with Russell Brunson's office. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Great, thanks for asking. Hey, I understand that you ordered uh, some information on the internet uh, about building and growing a business. Is that right? That is correct, yes. Great. Well, what I do here is I call back a few of the people that had ordered that information just to find out what it is that they were hoping to accomplish with it. Uh, did, did you order it just strictly for information or were you actually serious about making money online right now? Oh, I'm serious. You're serious about making money right now? Absolutely. How come? Well, I've been trying to do this on my own for a couple of years and I've bought into a lot of courses and spent a lot of money and I feel like I'm just not getting anywhere. I can't get any sales and no matter how hard I try to apply it, it's just not working. So, so right now you've gone through a lot of different things. You've tried a lot of different programs. Spent, sounds like you spent a lot of money there too. Oh my gosh. Okay. And, and nothing seems to be working. You're not actually able to produce anything yet? No. How come? Well, <clears throat> I, uh, I'm having problems getting my traffic. Uh, I don't know if I'm getting the right kind. And when they do come to my site, there's just no conversions. They're not opting in. Um, I can't, I can't make any sales. I don't know why. I just, I'm stuck. I don't know what it is. Just, just kind of, would, would it be fair to say that you, you're just not entirely sure what it is that you're supposed to be doing? I mean, if you knew what you're supposed to do, would you be out there doing it? It would be working. Yeah. Okay. Now, right now, are, are you looking for lump sums of cash or are you looking for short term or long term residual income? What, what, are, what are you looking for more, more particularly? Long term residual. Long, definitely. How, how come? Well, I would like to stay home with my son and be able to work from home more and something, I would like to create something online that's gonna be making money and not require my 100% attendance at all times, I guess. Okay. Do you just have the one kid, Kimberly? I do. How, how old is he? He's two and a half. He's, how fun, that, that's exciting. So you'd like to be able to spend some more time with him and not have to be tied down to a, to a J-O-B all day long, that, that if you get your online business actually making money, you could be at home spending that time with him. Yes, I need to get this up and going before he goes to kindergarten because I want to homeschool. Okay. How, how long have you been thinking about making money online for him? Is this something that's, you, you mentioned a couple of years, is it, has it just been the last two years since you had your son or has this been something that you'd like to be able to work from home for a long time? Oh, for a long time. I just, I just tried the internet stuff a couple of years ago, but I've been wanting to, I've been thinking about it for a long time. I actually started to buy into the courses a couple of years ago and it's just been spinning my wheels. Okay. Now, right now, are you looking to replace your income or are you looking to supplement it I, I, initially? Initially, I would like to supplement it, but ultimately I'd like to replace my income, yeah. Okay, so bare minimum, how much money would you need to be making each month to be able to replace that income? Uh, about 5,000 a month. About 5,000, about 60 grand a year would get you there? Yes. And that would allow you to be able to stay home to homeschool your son and, and to be able to, to do those things that you wanna do. Correct, but I don't want to stop there. You, okay, so you want to keep growing after that. Absolutely. All right. And, and for you, I, I mean, you, you've tried these different things. Uh, can, can you put your finger on what's holding you back from being successful? Honestly, I think it's lack of knowledge. Okay. I, would, I just don't know what I'm doing. Would it be fair to say you just don't know what you don't know? Exactly. Okay. And, and if you knew how to build and grow that business that was making you 60 grand a year, I mean, is that something you'd be serious about doing right now? Oh, of course, yes. Okay, let, let, let's, we're gonna stop the role play there. Now, if you guys notice, as I go through the script, okay, I, I'm very particular and, and I follow the script almost line by line. But after each, each different question, there's always additional questions that come up. When, when Kimberly talks about something like, I wanna stay at home with my kid, okay? All of a sudden, what this is doing is this is pulling emotion out of Kimberly. And as much emotion as I can pull out of Kimberly, I want to do that. 
when, when, I, when I hear talk about wanting to homeschool, when I hear talking about wanting to leave our current job, whatever it is, that, that if we take a minute right here and we dig into the reasons Kimberly wants to do something, that's what creates a sale at the end of the conversation. Now, I'm, I'm in the conversation now. What, what, what are we, Troy, are we, we five minutes in the conversation maybe? Yeah. Okay. Right now, do I know why Kimberly's gonna buy? Yes. I, I, I do. I know within five minutes of this conversation with just sitting down and asking her a few questions about who she is, what she wants to do, okay? At the very end of the conversation, when the closer, after the two parts get done, okay, when the closer, when it comes right down to it, the reason Kimberly is gonna pull out a credit card at the end of the conversation, and she's gonna put $7,995 on a credit card is because Kimberly believes that we can help her to be able to stay home with her, with her two and a half year old kid. That we're gonna be able to help her to be able to help him to get homeschooled. She believes that we're going to be able to help her to do all those things. That's why Kimberly is going to end up buying at the end of the conversation. Now again, the conversation, we're, just, we're five minutes into it. A set close will take anywhere between an hour and 15 to two hours, okay? That for the whole process. Five minutes in, if I have done my job right, okay? I know why somebody's gonna buy, and everybody that I talk to, the one thing that they're lacking, it's this, it's lack of knowledge. And sometimes people will say, and if you notice, Kimberly said a couple of times throughout the conversation, I, I, I don't know, okay? I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how this works. I don't know how this is put together, okay? I don't know why these other courses that I bought aren't working. I, I put the time into them. I don't know why. She said a number of times, I don't know what I'm doing. So all of a sudden as I go through this process and I get her to say, I don't know what I'm doing. I lack the knowledge, okay? Now I've got the ability to walk somebody through the rest of the process. And it doesn't matter what somebody's concerns are. It doesn't matter if they, they don't have the time, cause, cause gosh, Troy, if you knew how to build and grow your business working at it five hours a week, would you do it? Absolutely. Okay, so you just don't know how to do that right now. Pretty much. Okay, Troy, <clears throat> you, you, you don't have the money to build and grow your business. Is that, is that what you're concerned about? One of them. Okay, Troy, if you knew how to build and grow your business without using your own money, if you could use somebody else's money to build and grow your business, is this something you'd be serious about doing right now? Absolutely. So really for you, it's just a matter of you not knowing how to find somebody else's money to build and grow your business. That would be accurate. Okay, so if that helps you guys to understand, everybody's problem is simply this. I, they don't know what they're doing, they have a lack of knowledge if they knew how to do something in five to 10 hours a week. If they knew how to build and grow a business uh, wi without, uh, without using their own money. If they just don't know what they're doing. We provide them with the information, the knowledge, again, to get them from where they're at, where they wanna be, we bridge that gap. That bridge right there is the knowledge that we're creating to help them to get to where they want to be. So the, the next part of the script that we're going to go through and we're going to cover, and this is probably throughout the next hour and a half of being on the phone, actually going through a training, whatever it is, this is probably the most critical, the most key part of the entire process. Too often I see people move on because they don't pull out enough hot buttons. They don't really find out what Kimberly's passion is, what she wants to achieve, what she wants to accomplish. If, if I don't pull those things out of Kimberly, there's no way that at the end of the conversation, I'm gonna say, Kimberly, pull that credit card out and let's put $8,000 on it because she's not emotionally tied into this. That's the only way that this process works is those, those emotions have to be pulled out and, and we have to justify that emotion with logic and we're gonna do that throughout the process, but I, I could talk with somebody logic, logically all day long why they should do this. If I haven't pulled out those emotional hot buttons, I'm never going to be able to walk them through that process. I'm never going to be able to get them to the point where they actually say, yes, I'm willing to pull out my credit card and to do this. Make sure you pull out the hot buttons and always ask additional questions. Why did you do this? What would that mean to be able to stay home with your son? Why do you want to homeschool him so bad, Kimberly? And, and it doesn't matter. Troy, we, we can do the same thing with Troy. Troy, why did you order the information? 
So I want to learn how to do this so I can travel. What, Troy, where do you want to travel? Uh, wherever uh, I'm able to. Do, do, do you have any place in particular that you've always kind of thought about and dreamed about going? All the national parks. All the national parks? Like you want to do it in an RV or do you want to? Do. Do, so, so get a big RV, get the family. Uh -huh. which, which national parks do you want to go to first? Well, Grand Canyon, right? Grand Canyon. Yeah, hike down in the canyon. Hike down in the canyon. Okay, where else? Well, you name off a few, and I'll uh, and, and, I'm gonna go to and, and, any of the ones. Yellowstone and and you know where I can get a sticker on the back of my RV. I love that. You, you, you want you want to have that RV covered with uh, that's it. That dork driving down the road with all the stickers on the back of the RV. Got, that, that's. Do, do you have the RV yet? No. You don't. Okay. Have you looked at RVs before? Oh, yeah. Okay. What, what's an RV run? Well, the one I'm looking at is about half a million dollars. About, about five hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Is that? You, you, it, I'll, it better be nice, huh? <laughs> right. Okay. That, that's a, that's a mansion on wheels, there, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. Okay. So, so as far as uh, you taking your family with you on on the RV trips, how, how many kids do you have, Troy? Three. Three kids. Okay. You, you want to take them around the country, go to all the national parks. That's right. Okay. What What do you think your kids would think about seeing Yosemite? They would dig it. Oh, they they would, wouldn't they? Yeah. Okay. What What other things? Troy, do you want to accomplish by building and growing this business online? You know what? I, there's a, a book rattling around in here. I like to write a book. Mm -hmm. um, love to go out and, and learn from some of my heroes out there, you know, and then be able to teach that to people. Really love to do that. And so spend time learning and teaching and just giving back. So, so really spending time with your family and then sharing those things that you've learned and helped you to become a better person you want to share those with other people as well. That's right. Now, Troy, right now you're you're working a job, right? Forty hours a week working construction, right? Bell to bell, baby. But bell to bell, okay. Can 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 you leave for three months and tour the tour the country in an RV with your job? Nope. Not not a chance. Okay. What what would you say is holding you back? Now, I know you bought a lot of things online as well. What what would you say is holding you back from actually, instead of talking about it? actually making money and getting to that point where you got that RV, where you start, where you start getting those stickers and putting them on your RV. What's stopping you from doing that? You no, know, it's the time thing. It's, a little, it's confusing. You know, it's, it all looks really exciting. You get the information and then, you know, you've got to do homework with the kids. You've got to make them dinner. You've got all these things happening. And then I sit down and I start going through these courses and, you know, I'll start Googling uh, something at nine o'clock in the evening and at two in the morning, I still don't have it figured out. And that's happened more than, <laughs> more than 10 times. Okay. So it's a little frustrating. So, so really for you, it, it's just a matter of time. It's time. Okay. If you knew how to build this business in say five to 10 hours a week, one to two hours a day that you were able to put into your business, and you knew that that would get you to the point, having that RV with all the stickers on the back, your three kids running around it as you're driving around the country, if you knew how to do that in five to 10 hours a week, I mean, is that something you'd be serious about doing right now? Absolutely. So really for you, it's just a lack of knowing how to do it. That's right. Okay. Now, now it, again, we can, date, we can do this and we can take this with any problem, any situation that anybody brings up because really the reason, the, the only reason people don't do things is they just simply don't know how. If people want to know how to build, if people want to build a business, one of the things that holds them back is they just don't know how to get out there and they don't know how to build the business. Once we help them to understand that, that gosh, it's just a lack of knowledge. Once we help them to understand that and know that, we can take them through the rest of the process. Don't ever move on in the script, okay, until you get them to say, I don't know what I'm doing in some form or another. If you do that, you're taking the next hour and a half, two hours of your life and you're wasting it. Okay, you, you're, you're, you're just, you're spinning your wheels and you know what, occasionally somebody might go through at the end of the day, somebody might turn into a sale at the end of the day, but really you're, you're just spinning your wheels without getting results. Okay. Now the next part of the script that we're going to talk about is the blast. One of the things that's really critical is we don't spend a whole lot of time, especially in the script. And even in the close, we don't spend a whole lot of time talking about the business in detail. That, that's, that's what they're buying. That's what they're purchasing is all the, all the details, all the nuts and bolts. But obviously we've got to give them a little bit of a taste of what it is that we do, how this works. And so, so what I do is I say, <clears throat> you know what? I, I, I understand that you don't know what you're doing and gosh, Troy, I don't know for sure, but man, may, maybe I can help. Let me tell you what I do here and what this call is all about. First of all, 
we're looking for a few individuals that we can work with one-on-one -on -one, um, and, and for people who are whoops, for, for people who are ready to make some changes that will improve their financial situation by coming aboard what we call our success team now the whole reason we call it our success team is we're looking for success stories that we can use to build and grow our business in future in future infomercials testimonials things of that nature uh, what we do is we train you on how to build a successful online business. Working at it, like I mentioned to you, Troy, just five to 10 hours a week. And our goal is to help you to build and grow a successful business with a positive cash flow in as little time as possible. Now, Troy, when we create a success story with you, and you've got your RV, you got your kids, would you be all right with us using, you know, a, a picture of you or a video of you and your family at the Grand Canyon or Yosemite? To, to build and grow and promote our business in the future? Absolutely. Okay, all right, because that, that's the whole purpose behind what it is that we're doing here. Now, in that case, let me stop you right here and explain you just a little bit more kind of what my role is with Russell Brunson. Uh, my job is I'm here basically to weed people out. Obviously, we can't work with everybody who's ordered Russell's information. There's hundreds, thousands of people that have ordered his information. It's impossible for us to work with everyone. The reason being, is the people that we decide to bring aboard the success team, we actually set them up with a personal mentor. Now this mentor is a professional online consultant who's actually gonna train you step by step through the entire process of building and growing your, your business. They work with each student one-on-one -on -one for the next 12 months. Now in, in everybody's, you know, as, as we go through this, some of these things are going to change. You know, it might be three months, it might be six months. But, but just for this particular situation, and, and as we go through, your scripts will adapt. Uh, again, just, just look at the general idea. So what we do is we work with you one-on-one -on -one for the next 12 months, okay? Now, this next question that you're gonna ask to your prospect is key and it's critical. <clears throat> Troy, let me ask you this. Gosh, if you could work with Russell Brunson or, or somebody like him one-on-one -on -one for the next 12 months and they could teach and train you and show you how to build your business, do you think you'd be successful? Absolutely. How come? Oh, the guy's just been around. No, 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 wait, just a minute, Troy. Right there, Troy says absolutely. Troy is going to sell himself right now on all the reasons why he needs to give me his credit card at the end of the conversation. Now, one of the most important things to realize about the entire script process is I can talk all day long about why you need this, about how good Russell Brunson is, about how successful he is, how cool his Ferrari is, it, it, it doesn't matter, okay? I can tell you about those things all day long, and it could be a lie. But if I get Troy to tell me why Russell Brunson is so cool or why your product is so amazing or so incredible, that's, that's a truth, that's gospel, okay? We, we, we can't change that, okay? Now, now all of a sudden, instead of me becoming the salesperson, Troy becomes a salesperson in convincing me why he needs my product, okay? And, and so, so, so it, we, we change that situation around. That's when sales become easy. When the prospect is convincing me why he needs to give me his money. That's why sales become easy if you ask the right questions. We get the emotion built up, okay? And, and I can't ask this question if I haven't done the introduction correctly, if I haven't gone through the introduction and I haven't got him to say, I don't know what I'm doing, okay? And, and I haven't gone through this process. I can't ask this question and I can't get Troy to say absolutely if I haven't gone through everything correctly. So Troy, you, it, Troy's told me absolutely, it's gonna work, it's gonna benefit him to work with Russell Brunson. Now, I could stop there. I'm, I, Gosh, could, could I get a better answer than absolutely? Troy, Troy, Troy's being easy on me, okay? But, but, but I get this answer of absolutely. Do I stop there or do I keep digging? I like it, diggy. S simple question, just real simple. I, I asked Troy, how come? And then the most important thing I do is I shut up, okay? Because now Troy is going to sell me, so Troy, how come? Why, why would working with Russell Brunson make such a difference for you? 
because he's a good wrestler. He's got nice hair, and he's rich. <laughs> wrestler? <laughs> a good wrestler. You know, wrestle has been around, and he's one of the things I see is he associates with the guys who are at the top of the game, and he is at the top of the internet marketing game. And so I've uh, been around long enough to know that, you know, 12 months goes by really, really quick and time is money. And so getting to work with Russell can compress that time frame. I can get this done in, you know, 30 days to get my system up and running. Uh, and then from that point forward, I can spend the, the other 17 months making money instead of trying to figure it all out. Um, that just makes a lot of sense to me. So, so really what you're saying is instead of you spending that time, from nine o'clock till two o'clock in the morning, Google searching and getting sidetracked or doing different things, you, you're actually going to be able to do things and actually see results. Absolutely. Okay. You know, especially with kids, you know, you, they're this high, you know, one day and, you know, it seems like just the next day they're this high. But, you know, time goes by quick. And one of the challenges is we just start missing it, you know, and I, I just don't want to miss anymore. It reminds me of that old country song. You know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm from Idaho. I, I, I showed my, my Boise State stuff up there, but, you know, I've, I've got a little hick in me. And, uh, you know, you, Al, Alabama, watching your kids grow up in pictures, and, and, it, and it seems like so often we see our kids growing up in pictures because we're spinning our wheels without getting results. Now, I've just sat here. I've asked Troy a couple of questions, okay? I've restated what Troy has, has said, and, and now I'm going to tie Troy down. Troy, so what you're telling me is that if you had the opportunity to work with Russell Brunson, you feel that you'd be successful? Yes. Okay. Troy, if, if you had the chance to work with Russell Brunson, you feel that you'd have that opportunity to actually get that RV, travel around the country, stop working construction, and, and actually spend that time with your kids that you want to? Yeah, yes I do. Okay. So really for you, it's just a matter of making sure that you're doing the right things in the right time, in the right order and you feel that Russell Brunson can help you to get there? Yes. Okay. Is, is Troy sold? I, 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 I believe so, okay? The thing that we want to make sure of, Troy's emotional. I pulled out a lot of emotional things here with Troy, okay? The thing that I want to make sure of, though, is that with that emotion that I tie it in with logic, and I also make sure that Troy is in a situation, in a position to actually become a part of the success team. Uh, <clears throat> We're, we're gonna do the same thing because this question here, okay, is why would Russell Brunson, okay, what, why would that make a difference? So critical. We need them to be able to say that working with Russell Brunson, working with your product, working with your book, having you speak for them, having you train them at their company is the next best thing to sliced bread. If I can get them to say that, okay, I've gone through the process, I've done things correctly, I'm, I'm going all the way through. Now. I've just had Troy tell me all these reasons why Russell Brunson would be so great for him. I've restated, I've tied him down. Kimberly, let's, let's pretend that uh, you know, you're on the phone, you're, you're, Troy's, uh, you're Troy's wife, okay? So Kimberly, tell me why you feel that Troy would be such a good candidate for our team. Hmm. Well, he is outgoing and motivated and he uh, is tenacious and he's definitely willing. He's open-minded. I know that he would be, um, you know, take direction very well and he wouldn't stop until he made it. Awesome, awesome. Troy, tell me why, why do you feel that Kimberly would be a good, a good partner, a good part of your team? You know, Kimberly's just uh, very focused, clear about what she wants you know, and willing to do what it takes to, to make that happen. And also just frustrated with seeing things, you know, all these time slip by and it keeps going by, just going by faster. So she's, um, she's very driven. Awesome. As, as you do that and you ask that question, and, and if we just have just one person on the phone, if we just have Troy on the phone, I, I can ask Troy the same question. Troy, why would, you, why would you be a good candidate? Troy spends all the time selling me on why I should take his money on why he's going to give me his credit card number at the end of the conversation. With a couple, it's a great thing, and, and it's only happened to me once that one of the spouses said that the husband wouldn't be a good fit, that we, we're, we're not gonna talk about that. Occasionally that does happen, but, but very, very seldom in, in, in thousands and thousands of different situations that, that, that I've been through. Um, that, that it's so powerful, and, and it builds so much teamwork between the husband and wife when the wife says why the husband would be a good candidate, why the husband and the husband says that wife would be a good candidate, because now they're selling 
their spouse on why they're willing to give the credit card number, why they're willing to give you money at the end of the conversation. So this, this here is the blast. And if you notice, this is really about all the time that I'm going to spend in the set talking about the business. Okay, and, and I, gosh, we give you a mentor. You work with them one-on-one -on -one for 12 months, okay? Um, I'm not spending a whole lot more time telling them about what we do. And the reason is, is because it's not really about us. It's about you, it's about your hopes, your goals, your dreams, what you want to accomplish. And because I know that our product and the products that Russell Brunson promotes, the products that we're working with you guys on, okay, that they're good, solid, sound products that we put together, that we've worked on, that are going to help people to achieve their goals, um, that, that we can pull this out of them. The next thing that, that we do is, is we're, we're going to go back and we're going to talk and, and I'm going to explain, I'm going to say, well, Kimberly, I do want you to understand that me personally, I'm not an expert in building online businesses. Now, the reason that I do that, the reason that that sentence is in there is it postures and it sets up my, close, my closer when I actually turn the, the, uh, the prospect over in the second part of the, uh, uh, of, of the sales process. I'm not an expert in building online businesses. My job is simply to find the people that I feel are qualified for Russell's program. Now, if I feel good about you, I'm gonna turn you over to the director of the program. Now that's gonna be the closer, and it doesn't matter um, whether you're setting or you're closing, everybody should be, be setting and closing. Uh, and so at some point in time, uh, Troy might be the closer, and the next, the next call, Kimberly might be the closer and might be the expert because you're taking the time to be able to put together the right idea, the right plan, the right program for that particular prospect. Uh, that I feel qualified for Russell's program. If I feel good about you, I'll turn you over to the director of our program who is the expert. He has two responsibilities. First, he'll explain the details of the program to you. And second, and most importantly, his job is to make sure we're bringing the right types of people aboard this team. Now, what I need to do, Troy, before I can turn you over to him, is I need to fill out a quick profile. I need to find out a little bit about you. I need to ask you a few questions to find out where you are professionally as well as financially right now. Then I want to compare this to where you want to be in the future, and this is going to help me to determine whether or not you're going to be a good candidate for our success team. Is that all right if I ask you a few questions? Fair enough. Okay. Now, right there, something that, that's key and critical to focus on and understand, Troy has given me permission to basically ask him any question that I want to ask him. Okay. I, I've asked him for permission to ask about his personal life, about his financial life, about his professional life. I have the permission to ask Troy any question that I want. Sometimes some of the people, especially the setters and especially a new salesperson, they'll get, they'll get a little intimidated at some of the next questions that we're going to ask. And, and what you have to remember is that I've asked them for permission to be able to do this. Now the other thing too that, that's critical to understand is that not only have I asked them for permission, I've also given them the ability to see where they're at where they want to be, that we can, again, bridge that gap between it. And, and everybody, put yourselves in this situation for just a moment, okay? If whatever your goals and your dreams and your hopes are in life, you, you look at those mentally in your head, you think about where you're at, and, and then you think for just a moment, if there's that much of a possibility, just even a chance, that this guy can help you to reach your goals and your dreams and what you want to be, would you answer my questions? Okay, no, nobody's going to turn me away from that. Nobody's going to tell me, hey, I'm not going to answer that. that. That's too personal. The only times I've ever had somebody tell me I'm not going to answer those questions, and you, you guys will see, we get, we get pretty um, in-depth in their financial situation where they're at. Uh, here in this, this next portion, what we call the probe. Okay, whenever I have gone through the process, the introduction correctly, whenever I've gone through the blast and I've, I've helped them to understand that Russell Brunson is the gap to help them to get there, I've never had anybody that's ever told me, you're being too personal. I'm not gonna answer that. It's all about going through the process correctly. The only time these questions get difficult is when I don't go through the process that, that we've talked about up to this point. So the next part is the probe, okay? And, uh, 
when I get into the part of the probe, the process of the probe, I, I almost sound like I've got, and, and most of the time, I, I'm gonna have a piece of paper in front of me with these questions, okay? And I almost wanna sound like I'm holding the clipboard and I'm just simply asking somebody some basic questions. This is just what I have to do in order to get you to the next step, to get you over to my closer, to be able to help you to reach your goals and your dreams of homeschooling your five-year-old, of, of going around the country in your RV. I, I just have to go through this process. No different than somebody would um, if, if I was looking for a, a cell phone and, and I'm, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna buy a cell phone that no different than what's your, what's your name, what's your address, what's your social security number. As, as I go through that and, and I just kind of take that mentality that all I'm doing right now is, is I'm just making a list, okay? And a lot of these questions, okay, some of them we might already know just a little bit, but a lot of these questions are gonna be really basic questions and they're just designed to get us in the mode of quickly in, asking a question and quickly having the prospect answer the question. So we're gonna go through and what's your current business? Okay, now we might dig a little bit deeper into it dependent upon the prospect, exactly what their business is and find out a little bit more about the model. Um, what, what's your website? Um, you know, if they don't have a website, but if they do, make sure you get the web address so that, they, that the, whoever's closing the next part of it, they, they can take a minute or two, they can look at it. Um, some people are gonna have squeeze pages, some people aren't. Have you ever done anything at all to make money online? <clears throat> I, I ask that question and I even ask silly questions like, have, have you ever made money um, selling something on eBay, selling something on Craigslist? The reason that I ask that is it helps people to understand that money can be made, all, even if it's something that you paid five times as much for and you're selling it on eBay at yard sale prices, people start thinking, gosh, there is the ability to make money online. What have I done to make money online? The next question, do you have a financial partner or spouse involved in your business? This is critical. Last thing in the world you want to do is spend the entire time going through a proposal with only one of the decision makers. Make sure that you get the decision makers on the phone. If there is a financial partner involved, okay, my conversation is going to go something along these lines. Kimberly. Uh, right, right now, is there anybody else involved in the business with you? A spouse, a financial partner, anybody like that? Uh, yes, I have a partner actually. Oh great, well you know what? Why don't you grab your partner, I'm, I'm gonna put you on hold for just a minute, why don't you grab your partner and, and both get on the phone and then we can go ahead and finish the rest of this. Oh well, you know, I mean I'm kind of the sole decision maker. Um, I mean I do need to run it by them but I can go ahead and go through this and and try to figure it out with them later. We don't have to stop. Okay, so, so as far as actually making decisions, as far as building and growing this business, I, th this is something that you are at least gonna run by them? Oh yeah, absolutely. I would have to okay. run by them before I could- Well, in order for me to be able to go on through the rest of this, you know, and in order to be able to talk about these things that we wanna do in the rest of the program, I do need to have them on the phone with us. So can, can we stop for just a minute and can you go grab her? Well, she's not here. I guess I could call her and set up a can, can, we, can we three way? Do, do, yeah, do, we'll have to do that. Uh, okay. Well, you know what? Let right then and there. Okay. There, there's not that. There's not a lot of reason to go on through the conversation, and and I might go a little bit further, and you guys will see why. Um, just to make sure that the prospect does have the financial means to actually go through and make a commitment. But I'm not going to go much further than that because last thing in the world I want to do is I want to set up an appointment with Kimberly. Kimberly's husband, and, and we get to the end and find out that they're flat broke and there's nothing that they can do anyhow, okay? So, so I, 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 want, I want to make sure that, that, that I'm going to do that, and, and so I'm, I might say something along the lines, of, you know what, Kimberly, let's go through just a couple more things, okay? And then what we're going to do is we'll stop before I get you over to my director, and we'll schedule a time that we can do a conference call with you and your husband, okay? Uh, but, but I am literally, and, and if you listen, Kimberly said, hey, I... I kind of make all the decisions. Guess what? Kimberly doesn't make the decisions, okay? If Kimberly says she kind of makes the decisions, she doesn't, okay? A couple of things that, that, that have happened that, and, and that, that I know. A couple, a married couple, uh, if, if I have a husband on the phone and the husband says, yeah, I, I make all the decisions because, you know, it's that, it's that Tim Taylor in him, you know? That, that he's, he's got to get out there, he's got to make all the decisions, okay? Uh, 99 out of 100 times, 
uh, he doesn't make all the decisions. Every once in a while that I will get somebody who is a business owner, uh, who's making five, 10, 15, 20, hundred thousand dollar decisions all day long, every day. And he's running this as part of his business. Um, I might let that slide there and, and I might go on. I'm still going to try to get the wife on the phone. Okay. Uh, and, and that, that conversation would go kind of, kind of something like this. Troy, now are, are you married or single? I'm married. You're married. Okay. Obviously your wife's going to be involved in building this business with you. Is she there that we can get her on the phone? Um, she's picking up the kids. She's picking up the kids. What, what time do you think she's going to be back? Oh, I'm not sure about 5:30. About 5:30. Okay. If that was the response that I got from Troy, Okay. Again, I'm going to go a little bit further and I'm going to make sure that Troy does have money. Okay. Past that though. Okay. I'm going to set up an appointment at 530 to get Troy's wife on the phone. Okay. Now, Troy, if, if you would have said, oh, I make all the decisions. Okay. My, my wife, my wife wouldn't be involved in that decision. And, and you're, you're going to know this too. You're going to get a feel for this. If, if I've got somebody who is a professional, they're, they're a doctor, they're an attorney, They've got a successful business, something of that nature. And they say, no, I make the decisions. There's no question about it. Okay. You're going to know when you're going to hear that. I find it much more often with the men, they can't make the decision without the wife. Now, something that's interesting is the women, when they say, yeah, I can make that decision on my own. Uh, there's a lot better chance that the women can make that decision than the men. I'm, I'm married. I know that. And I understand that. And uh, my, my wife, Sandy, she'll make the decisions and, and, and I, I run them through her. Okay. That, 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 that's part of, part of just how, how it works. And you're going to find that as you, you, you talk with and you work with these people. Uh, the best answer here is if they're married, get the spouse on the phone. If they have a business partner, get the business partner on the phone. You will do less work for the same amount of money because if I go through the whole process, and they're like, wow, yeah, that sounds great, Mr. Summers. I'm excited about this. I want to get started. I just, I just need to run it by my wife. Well, they're going to go home. They're going to talk to the wife and they're going to say, hey, honey, I just, I just was on the phone with this really nice guy um, and he's going to help us to build a business online. It's only going to be $9,995. And this is how it works. And the only thing that they hear is $9,995 and nothing else. Okay. And so we've got to make sure that that spouse has the ability to go through that same process, having the emotion that they feel and they understand that. Uh, if, if I get on the phone with somebody right in the beginning and they mention, yeah, my kids and oh great. It's your wife. Gonna, obviously your wife's going to be involved right in the beginning, right in the introduction. Let's get your wife on the phone. She's going to be involved building the business with you. Okay set up a time to talk with them so I can build that emotion in, in both, both couples, in, in, in both parts of the, uh, the couple that I can have the, the husband, I can have the wife on there. I can have them working together right from the beginning and I can build that emotion and that excitement and find out what Troy's dreams are, what Kimberly's dreams are and build them together. It makes it really easy at the end of the conversation for them to collectively say, yes, we'll do it. Whereas if I go through the entire process, I give them a price, all the spouse is going to hear at the end of the day is how much it costs, how much it costs, how much it costs, not what it can do, not where it's going to get them. All they hear is that, uh, the best answer. If, if you've got somebody who's married, get the spouse on the phone. It's, it's that simple. Um, next question. How would you rate your personal credit? Excellent. Good, fair, poor. Troy, how, how would you rate your personal credit? Fabulous. It's not on there. Then. Uh, fa fa I, you know, that that's the next step up from excellent. Okay. So, so, Troy, why would you say your credit's fabulous right now? Oh, you know, we just pay our stuff on time and uh, don't care about a credit card debt. Pay our stuff off every month. Okay. Right, right there, Troy's giving me some great indicators, okay, that Troy's got excellent credit, okay? Pay my credit cards off every month. We, we, don't, we don't go into a lot of debt. You know, wh wh whatever it is, we've, we've always been on time. <clears throat> Kimberly, g give me an example of somebody that uh, is going to tell me, yeah, I've got good credit, but, but in reality, they don't really have good credit. And, and what types of things are they saying to you on the phone and, and what types of things you hear to help you to understand that, Hey, I need to dig a little bit deeper with this person. So Kimberly, how would you rate your credit right now? Excellent, good, fair, poor. Um, you know, it's decent. Okay. What, why would you say it's decent? 
Well, I mean, I've never filed a bankruptcy or anything, so um, I don't know. I just, it's all right, I guess, like a 500 something, you know? Okay. Kimberly said 500 something. So, so Kimberly's got a little bit of an idea of where her credit is. And, and obviously we know credit score in the 500 is, is more in the, uh, you know, the, 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 this category here rather than, than good or fair. Okay. But, but in all reality, it doesn't sound to me like Kimberly really, really knows where her credit is or if she has the ability to do anything at all with us. Okay. She, she's, she's kind of, she, she's, she's a little, just in her voice, if you hear it, she's just a little unsure, not exactly 100% where it is. She did say 500, but there's people with, you know, 560 credit scores that have credit cards um, with zero balances on them just because they've never used them before and, and, and other credit cards that, that, that are filled up. And, and so, so it, it could be drag, dragging that credit score down. And so it's very, very possible that somebody even with, who says, yeah, I've got a 500 credit score, could still have the availability to do something with this program. So our next thing that we want to do is we want to dig into somebody like Kimberly a little bit deeper to find out if we really can help them. So Kimberly, right, right now you, you'd say your, your credit's average, you know, it's, it's fair somewhere in there. Gosh, if, imagine for just a minute, okay, if Russell Brunson was to sit down and to write you a check to pay off all your debt, how big would he need to write that check for? <sighs> Mortgage included? Yeah, th throw it in there, yeah. Oh, I don't know, maybe $350,000? $350,000, okay. I I out of that three hundred and fifty grand, how much of that would you say is credit card debt? Just about twenty-five, thirty. Would you say it's twenty-five or thirty? Um, maybe like twenty-nine. About, about closer 20. to thirty. Cl 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 okay. Something to always notice, okay. When somebody says their credit card debt is between twenty-five and thirty thousand dollars, okay, chances are it's always going to be the higher, and chances are that it's probably going to be even above and beyond what when they say twenty-five to thirty thousand. Chances are it's going to be more. We as humans we try to exaggerate the good, and you know over underemphasize the bad, and so it's really important to to realize that and notice that. So I've got to ask Kimberly follow-up questions. When she says it's 25 or 30, okay, which is it closer to, 25 to 30? Oh, you know, it's, it's about 29,000. Okay, now Kimberly, is that, is that just on major credit cards? I'm not talking about, you know, like Macy's cards or Nordstrom's or anything like that. J just major credit cards like Visa, MasterCard, Discover, American Express. H how much do you owe on those cards? Oh, probably about 15. Uh, about 15,000 on those, okay. Now, if you were to take all your major credit cards and stack them into a big pile, what's the total amount of combined credit that's been extended to you? Um, 40? About $40,000. So right now on your major credit cards, you, you've got about $25,000 in available credit, is that right? Correct. Okay. Now, something that, that I do, and this, this is me personally, when I'm going through and I'm setting somebody up, I always look for whatever the price point is. Let, let's say the price point, it's a $5,000 product that we're selling, okay? I wanna make sure that I can find at least $10,000 in credit, okay? Now, Kimberly's just told me she's got about $25,000 in credit, but what a world of difference it makes for the closer at the end of the conversation to say, Kimberly, you got that Discover card with ten thousand dollars available on it, right? Is, is that is that right? That Correct. that one. Okay. Well, like I said, the investment is going to be four thousand nine hundred ninety-seven dollars. Let's just go ahead and use that Discover card and put it on that one. Okay. If I know where that twenty-five thousand dollars is at, okay, specifically. So so I'm going to break this down with Kimberly in, into a little bit more detail. Okay. So, so Kimberly, you've got about $25,000. Now, is that split out over one credit card in, in available credit? Or, or how, how many major credit cards are you carrying right now? A lot. So, so it's over a few. O over a few? Yeah. Okay. Which, which one do you have the most debt on? Um, probably my um, Chase. Y your Chase? Okay. So, so right now, I'm, I'm going to write down Chase in my, in my box here. And Kimberly, how much do you owe on your Chase card? 
Yeah, about eleven thousand. About eleven thousand dollars. So that that's the bulk of your debt. That fifteen thousand dollars in debt is on that Chase card. Right. Okay. And what's the total amount of credit they've extended to you on that Chase card? Oh, uh, I think that one's twenty. Twenty. Yeah, twenty. Uh, about twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Right now, what, and, and again, let, let, let's, let's say hypothetically that my product that I'm selling, it's a $5,000 product, okay? I've just found $9,000 that at the end of the conversation, my closer can say, Kimberly, go grab that Chase card, okay? I know it's a Visa card. It should start with a four. Um, let, let, let's go ahead and, and, and get this started, okay? Um, so, so as I break that down, that it gives my closer a lot easier opportunity to be able to go through that process. I know that Kimberly has that money at that point. Uh, now, I, I might break down one more card just so it doesn't seem like I'm just looking for money, uh, which, which I am, but, but I, might, I might go ahead and go through one more card or two more cards. Kimberly, and the other $4,000 that you have in debt, what, what card is that on? Is that split up over a couple of cards or? Uh, that's my capital. Your capital one? Okay, and, and is the other 4,000, is it all on, that, on the capital one? Right. Okay, and what's your limit on that card? Uh, ten. A ten thousand. Okay, and and do you know what your do you know what your interest rate on that card is? Uh, it's like fifteen or fourteen. F fifteen. Okay. Have Have you ever asked um, for for a, an, an interest rate reduction? Yeah, but with my credit score right now, it's kind of tough. Okay. You know, and and that, that's actually something my my director might talk to you a little bit about doing some possible balance transfers or or uh, um, interest rate reductions. There there might be some things that we can help you out with there. I, it just gets them talking a little bit about their credit cards and, and that, that really the whole purpose of what we're doing is not to put more debt on these cards to help people to get their credit cards paid off. Obviously, they might have to take a step backwards to take 10 steps forward, but it's helping them to understand that, that we're here to help them. So, so I'm going to continue with the rest of the probe. And, and that now that I know that, that I've got, you know, between the two credit cards with Kimberly, I, I've got about $14,000 in available credit. I know that there's something that I can do that I can work with Kimberly. I know that Kimberly is a good prospect. Now, if Kimberly is married, at this point in time, I'm going to finish out the rest of the probe and then I'm going to stop and I'm going to schedule an appointment with the husband. Okay. I'm going to get them on the phone with us. Okay. Cause now I know I've got somebody, I know I've got a prospect that has the financial means to, to purchase my big ticket item. Okay. And, and, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go at that point. But I'm going to ask him a couple of other questions. Hey, right now, Troy, do you have any other savings or credit lines, uh, home equity loans, anything like that? No, just some uh, silver. Some silver? Oh, that's a great thing to have right now, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay. And as far as a lot of the times in the conversation, you're already going to know what their occupation is. Uh, I, I made Troy a construction worker a little bit earlier today. Um, but, but Troy, what, what is it that you do for work right now? You know, I'm actually in kind of in between stuff right now. Kind of in between? Yeah. Okay. And so, so really doing this and, and building and growing your own business, that's really something you're wanting to do. Well, without a doubt. It's good timing, you know, in construction, it is uh, seasonal and it's cold outside. So I've got a couple of months probably so that I can uh, really focus a lot of time. What, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't hurt your feelings at all if you didn't have to go back out there when, when spring hits, would it? Not at all. Okay. And, and right now, do you own your own home or are you renting? Uh, we own it. Okay. And, and do you have a retirement fund set aside? Not really. Not, not really? Okay. Now. Trey, I've got a really good idea as far as where you're at right now. Now, I'd, I'd like to take a couple of minutes, and, and I know we kind of talked a little bit about having that RV and, and kind of some long-term plans and some long-term goals. I really want to take some time and talk about some shorter-term goals with you. Things that you want to do and you want to accomplish in the next 6 to 12 months, okay? So, Troy, 6 months down the road, okay? Where do you want to be with this business? What would be an optimal, ideal situation for you? In six months? In six months. You know, if we're just cash flowing, a couple grand a month, I think that'd be great. So, so just making some money, 2000 bucks a month, you'd, you'd be pretty happy with yeah, that? Yeah, it's just going to take some time to, you know, get clear and really learn the ropes uh, as we go along. So, yeah, that'd be great. Now, how, how long have you been working on building an online business for? Since 08. Since 08. Okay, so, so we're going back five years now. Uh -huh. How much money have you made since 08? Nothing. It's been a lot. Z Z zero. You're, you're in the red. You, you, you're in the red. Okay. So, so if we got you just bringing in a couple of thousand dollars a month within the next six months, that, that'd be a pretty phenomenal step for you. It'd be awesome. Yeah. Okay. What about 12 months down the road? Well, I think that, you know, we'll have some things figured out by then. So I'd like to, you know, triple that. I'd like to be around the $6,000 mark in 12 months. Okay. You know, just conservatively, I'd be really excited about that. Okay. And try, I, I appreciate those goals because I, I, I think they're very realistic goals. 
And you know, getting to the point that in 12 months, you're making $6,000 a month, okay, building and growing your business, that's something that we've helped a lot of people to be able to do. But, but Troy, you working with Russell Brunson, having him again help you to build and grow and help you to, 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 and to train you how to build and grow your business, do you think getting to that point of making six grand a month is realistic for you in the next 12 months? Oh yeah. How come? Oh, it's, Russell's done it over and over again. It, it's, it's kind of wash, rinse, repeat, isn't it? Pretty much. He knows and understands how to do it. And all you've got to do is follow that pattern. Troy, let, let, me, let me kind of tell you where I'm at with you right now. Going over your profile, uh, you look like a potential candidate for me to recommend to my director. But before I can turn you over to him, I, I've got to have you make four commitments to me um, but before, uh, before I can actually make that recommendation. The, the very first one, we've talked about it a little bit, but I, but I really want to, I want to make sure you fully understand what it is that we're looking for because it's got to be a two-way streak. We know and understand how to do this, but you've got to do your part as well. Troy, we, we've got to have a minimum time commitment of at least five to 10 hours a week. Is that something you can commit to right now? Absolutely. Okay. If I don't get a yes, an absolutely, uh, an affirmative, if, if I get on any of these commitments, any sort of uh, hesitation at all, I'm going to ask additional questions. I'm going to follow up. I'm going to, I, I want to make sure that they understand fully what it is that we expect from them. Uh, if they don't do their part, no matter what the product is, it doesn't just magically happen. They have to do their part. We've got to put that in. Kimberly, the next thing, we're looking for someone who is open-minded and teachable so that we can form a long-term, mutually beneficial relationship. Now, one of the things I like to do, and sometimes I'll ask R, but, but I like to ask why. Kimberly, why are you coachable and willing to learn from our experts? Well, I've just finally come to the realization that I don't know what I'm doing. And um, by humbling myself and, and listening, that's how I'm going to learn. And that's how I know this is going to work. So I have to take direction or it won't work. Okay. Do you, do you feel that Russell Brunson knows how to help you get to where you want to be? Oh, absolutely. Okay. The, the third thing, Troy, is we're looking for people that are decision makers. Uh, we're looking for people to start today. We're looking to build those success stories for our business. Um, tell me, when is the best time for you to start working towards your goal, having that RV, taking your kids around the country, putting those stickers on the back of the RV? When's the best time for you to start working towards that? Right now, brother. Right now? Let's do it. Okay. Well, if we find that this is going to be a fit for the both of us, is there anything at all that would hold you back for making the decision to get started today? Not that I can see. Okay, all righty. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go into to number four, the fourth commitment. And this is obviously the commitment that for most people is the most difficult thing to cover because we're actually gonna, we're gonna get into some, some nuts and bolts and some money. And so what I do is I'm really upfront with everybody. Hey, listen, when you're working with a mentor, there will be a tuition involved. We're not talking about using cash out of your pocket. We want to teach you the concept of using OPM or other people's money to build and grow your business. Now, Kimberly, are you familiar with the concept of OPM or other people's money? Um, vaguely. V vaguely? Okay. Have you ever used somebody else's money to actually make you money in the past? No. No? Okay. Well, is this a concept that you're willing to learn? Yeah, as long as it's legal. Okay. Right, we, we're only going to ask you, Kimberly, we're only going to ask you to rob one bank, okay? Uh -huh. And that, I'm just kidding, okay? Mm -hmm. Lighten the mood just a little bit. When so, I, I've had lots of people ask me, is it, hey, is, is this something that's legal? Okay, lighten the mood a little bit. Ha ha. You know, we're, obviously, we're not going to ask anybody to rob a bank, okay? Um, uh, of course, Kimberly, what we're going to do is, is we're, it, it's, it's entirely legal. But what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take just a minute and I'm going to explain this concept to you. The easiest way is to, to explain this is to take the example of banks. Now, you and I, we, we both make money. We take our money down to the bank. Does the bank just let that money sit in a vault until we want to come back and get it again? Well, no, I don't think so. What do they do with our money? They lend it, I guess, and they shuffle it around. and Yeah, they, they lend my money out to somebody else at a higher interest rate. They use my money to make money. Okay? Now... Most people don't realize 
that they have the exact same leveraging power as banks do. They just don't use it correctly. It's the power of a credit card. Now, Kimberly, have you ever used your credit cards to actually make you money in the past? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> okay. Now, don't, don't feel bad, Kimberly. Most people haven't, okay? Most people use their credit cards for things like clothes, food, trips, things that never make them any money, okay? They take the bank's money and go into debt and, 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 and it makes the bank more money, right? What we want you to do though, is we want you to use the bank's money that they've already loaned to you on a credit card and use it as a short-term leveraging tool to help you to build and grow your business. Now, Kimberly, obviously I'm not asking you to make a decision right now because you don't have enough information to make a good decision. My question is simply this, is using your credit cards to build and grow your business, is that a strategy that you're open to as long as you can see and understand how the business will pay for itself in a short period of time? Yeah, yeah it is. Okay. Now, now Kimberly, you, you sounded just, just a little unsure. Did, 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 do you understand how, did, do you understand the entire process there as far as working with the credit card and did, did everything make sense? Because you just didn't sound 100% sure with, with that answer. Yeah, I'm just pondering the, the new thought here. Okay, it, it's, it's kind of a, a new idea, right? Concept, yeah. yeah. You know, most people don't realize that the whole reason credit cards were invented in the first place was they were invented for business owners to, to bridge that gap. Say I've, say I've got a grocery store, okay, and I want to fill my grocery store up with, you know, cheese and bread and milk, and I put it on a credit card or a line of credit from the bank. The bank come, I, I go out and I buy all my, my groceries. People come in and buy my groceries, and I pay that line of credit off back to the bank so, so that I can get my business up and running and started. Well, the bank said, hey, gosh, if we can get people into debt here, okay, and we can have them paying 18% interest on the money that we loan them, we're gonna make a killing on this. Most people don't use their credit cards correctly. We want you to use them as a short-term leveraging tool to build and grow your business. So what I wanna do then, Kimberly, is I wanna get an idea of what you would feel comfortable investing into your business um, in, in order to get it started. Now, we have students who invest at different levels. Some of them, some of them invest ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, some, some even more. But most of our students invest somewhere between about five and ten thousand dollars to get their business started. Kimberly, where would you see yourself investing to get your business started today? The top, the middle, or the bottom level? Uh, the bottom. Okay. Why would you choose that level? Well, I'm just so new at this, and I need to I need to get started at least before I could uh, invest in the next level or advance up. I just probably the, the bottom for now. And, and Kimberly, I, I'm, I'm gonna tell you too, that my recommendation too is, is going to be for you to start at that lower level as well, okay? Now, anytime, we'll pause for just a minute on, on the role play, anytime somebody tells me that they wanna invest in any level, at this point in the conversation, other than the bottom level, I really question what's going through their head. They have no information, they've got some random numbers, some random figures thrown out there, okay? Uh, anybody who says I want to invest at the top level, they have no idea what's going to happen, what's going to take place, and that, that's where they say they want to invest. I, I, I would really draw back and I, I would dig into that. Why do you want to invest at the top level? It doesn't happen very often. Most people at this point in the process realize and understand, obviously I'm getting started, I want to build and grow a business. The best place for me to start is let, let's get started at the entry level and build and grow from there. Okay. Make sure that you ask follow-up questions. Why do you want to invest it at whatever level it is? Why do you feel comfortable there? Ask questions, ask why, why, why as much as you can. Okay, Kimberly, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna put you on hold for just a minute. And I'm gonna see if I can get my director to speak with you. While I do that, can you go and grab a pen and a piece of paper and, uh, and, and I'm gonna go and speak with my director, okay? Sure. Right here, I stop the conversation and I put the prospect on hold. Now, Troy, when you put a prospect on hold right here, gosh, Kimberly sounds good, doesn't she? She said she wants to invest at the lower level and, and I'm, I'm, I'm putting her on hold for just a minute. What, what's going through your mind at this point in, in the set process? If I'm being set, um, put on hold? Yeah, if, yeah. What, or or what, what do you think is going through your prospect's minds okay, when you put them on hold? What's going on? What, 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 what's he saying? You know, is he talking about me? Am I gonna make it on the team? I, that's what I mean. And, and that, that's exactly what I want going through their heads what have I done to sell myself 
to this first guy to make sure that, that, that the director is going to feel that I'm a good candidate for the team, for the program. Now, I generally let people sit on hold for at least two to three minutes, okay? Uh, if, if you run out and you, you run back 30 seconds later, uh, it, it looks cheesy. It, it just does. I would go and find whoever's closing the deal and, and I'd walk in and I'd say, hey, Troy, I've got Kimberly on the phone. Let me tell you just a little bit about her. You know, give, give you a two or three minute rundown on Kimberly, okay? And, and I'd say, so she, she's ready to talk to you, okay? Are you ready in five minutes, 10 minutes? How much time do you need before you can call Kimberly back and, and go ahead and close the deal down, okay? I, I wanna take that time. I wanna let him sit for a little bit, okay? Now, some people get scared with them sitting and occasionally people will hang up. They'll say, hey, I'm, I'm, I, 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 I don't wanna sit around for this. And that's not a bad thing. If, if at that point that somebody's so scared about reaching their hopes, their goals, and their dreams, and they hang up, they probably weren't a great candidate in the first place, and it probably just saved the closer an hour's worth of his time with, with someone who's just gonna waste their time. Not, not a bad thing here, okay? So let me have you do this first of all. Let me, let me have you, do you, do you, have, do you have an experience? No, Troy? I mean, Kimberly's great at that. I mean, two to three minutes is like, you know, she's five to seven minutes. She, I go to she the makes bathroom, some, I make a phone call, I, <laughs> I wash my hands. And, and there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong. I, I, I had a, I had a, a good friend um, who, who would actually, he would go out and, and he would have a cigarette while, while, while he was having them on hold. He, that, that's, that's just what he did. He's like, it's posturing. I want to, I want to take my time with them. And, and, and that, that's, that's just what he did. Okay. Uh, give them some time to sit down, to think about it. You want them to think that you're going into the, to the director's office and, and, and you are, and, and you want them to think that you're in there pitching the director on why I'm a good candidate. Okay. That's, that's the, the thought process that you want them having as, as you go through this. So a, after two, three minutes or, or even longer, I don't think it's a bad thing to let them sit longer. I, I get back on the phone and I say, Kimberly, uh, th thank you. I, I appreciate you holding. Let, let me have you write down my, my director's name. Uh, his name is Mr. Troy Olds. And Kimberly, let me tell you, you're very lucky to be able to speak with Mr. Olds because he is an expert at building and growing successful online businesses. But most importantly, his job is to make sure that we have the right types of people aboard our success team. Now, he wants the very best people. It's gotta be a win for you, right? Yeah. Okay, well obviously it's gotta be a win for our team as well. So I, I want you to understand that if he doesn't invite you aboard the team, don't be offended, it's not the best fit for everybody, okay? But Mr. Old said he'd be happy to call you back. He, he's in a meeting right now, it's gonna be about five or 10 minutes before he can call you back. He, he gave me a couple of things that he wants you to do over the next five to 10 minutes, okay? We, we've talked a lot about your goals and I've got a lot of your goals written down here, but he wants you to do some of those things and he wants you to write them down for yourself, okay? So the very first thing he wants you to do is he wants you to write down a six month to one year financial goal, an actual dollar figure. How much money do you wanna make in the next six months and the next 12 months? Write that down. The, the second thing he wants you to do is he wants you to write down three things that you want more of besides money. Now, Kimberly, we've talked about those, okay? Gosh, it's making that 5,000 bucks a month and, and being able to stay home with your son and homeschooling him, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, write that down. M Mr. Olds is gonna wanna hear about those things. He's gonna wanna understand what it is that's really motivating. Cause you know, it's, it's really nice for us to talk about money and a six month financial goal and a one year financial goal but money is just a dollar figure. It's a piece of paper, it's a number in a bank account. It's the things that money allows us to do that really makes us happy. And you being able to stay home with your son, I know how important that is to you, okay? So write that down, write down two or three, or write down three things you want more of besides money. The last thing that he's gonna want you to do before he calls you is to write down two or three weak areas that you feel that you have regarding the business, okay? Now, I, I, I know we've talked about, you don't know a whole lot about what you're doing right now, and it might be you just don't know what you don't know, and you can write that down, and that's fine. But if you can think of two or three things specifically, I know you said you spent a lot of money building and growing your business, 
but write down two or three things that you really feel like you need some help with in building and growing, growing your business. Now, like I said, he'll be calling you back in about five or 10 minutes, but do me a favor and right up front, let Mr. Olds know how serious and motivated you are to build and grow your business uh, right now. I'll, I'll have him give you a call back as soon as he gets out of his meeting, okay? Wonderful, okay. All right, thank you for your time, Kimberly. Thank you. Okay, that is the set process, okay? Now, <clears throat> throughout this process, Kimberly and Troy uh, have, have gone through this and, and they're, they're doing this actively with Russell Brunson right now, this entire process. And as we've gone through it, they, they've kind of been a little bit of, uh, I, I, I would say they've definitely been the lay down candidate, the absolute best candidates that I could possibly have on the phone, okay? <clears throat> We're gonna talk about some actual questions, some experiences that they've had on the phone, specifically with the set, Okay, what's happened and what's taken place, maybe where they've had some struggles and, and how to overcome those. And, and we'll spend some more time in additional trainings later on. We'll go into some more detail on, on specifically on those. But uh, ju just right, off the, uh, right uh, off the top of your heads, what types of questions have you guys run into, have you guys had that have come up um, that, that aren't, weren't as picture perfect as the, the uh, set script that we just went through? Kimberly, do you, do you have any questions? I just think that, you know, that's, that's a lot of money and I think that I can probably do this on my own if I just worked a little harder at it and, and um, just dedicated more time. I don't know that I'm quite ready to make that kind of a commitment yet. Okay, great question. Because really when it comes down to it at the end of the day, almost the only question you're ever going to get, it's always gonna be about the money. It, 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 it just is. And th th there's gonna be a couple of things that, that I'm gonna say here about the money, okay, and we'll, we'll talk about specifically that question. But nine times, 99 out of 100 times, that that question comes up at the end of the conversation is because I haven't done my introduction right, okay, because I haven't pulled out those hot buttons, really pulled them out, really got them emotional, okay, I haven't pulled those out at that point, and I haven't tied them in to actually working with an expert in working with Russell Brunson and help them to say that, yes, Russell Brunson would help me to be able to stay home with and, and homeschool my five-year-old, okay? That Russell Brunson would be able to help me to get that RV to, to travel around the country. Because w when, when we talk about those things, uh, Kimberly, is, is $10,000 a lot of money? Yeah. Uh, sure it is, of course it is. Okay, uh, Kimberly, put a price on homeschooling your child. Ouch. <laughs> no, absolutely not. No, no, put, put, put a dollar figure on it. Um, I, actually, you know, Kimberly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a dollar figure. More than 10000 Kimberly, is it worth more than $10,000? Absolutely. Without question. Troy, is having that time with your family in the RV, going to Grand Canyon, Yosemite, Yellowstone, Niagara Falls, put a price on it. That, that's time that enter... It's, it's like, is it MasterCard? The, the, it, pr priceless, priceless, okay? Okay, and so, so the very first thing I'm gonna say is, Kimberly, if you're getting that question, okay, at the end of the sales process, the end of the set script, okay, it's because there hasn't been enough emotion built here in the introduction. Like, like I said, first five minutes of the conversation, if I've done it right, okay, I'm gonna know what motivates you. I'm gonna know what motivates you. I'm gonna know why at the end of the conversation, you're gonna pull your credit card out of your back pocket and why we're gonna get started with this today at that point in time, okay? <clears throat> I absolutely know that Russell is the best for this and I, I believe he's worth more than 10,000 and I know he could make me money right away. I just feel like I need to get a couple more sales on my own before I can get to that level where I could work with someone like Russell Brunson. Kimberly, how, how long have you been working on your online business for? A couple years. A couple years. How much money have you made in the last couple years? I don't know, maybe like a couple hundred dollars. A couple hundred dollars? Okay. Are you happy with that? No, of course not. Okay. If you were able to work with Russell Brunson, actually, Kimberly, how soon do you want to start making that five grand a month? Well, immediately, of course. Okay, doing what you're doing, are you going to get there? No, I mean, I have a couple ideas. Okay. 
How much money have they made you? <laughs> None. Okay. And, and Kimberly, and, and, and you know, I, I'm, I'm probably being a little bit more brash with Kimberly but, than, I, than I would be with a prospect on the phone. But the thought process is the same. How long have you been working at building and growing? Kimberly, how long have you known that you wanted to homeschool your kid? Since before he was born. So, so we're going back three years? Yeah, at least. Okay. Did, did, you, did you know even before you knew you were pregnant that when you had kids eventually someday you'd probably like to homeschool them? Was that, was that ever kicking around the back of your head? Yes. Okay. So you, you've known that you've wanted to homeschool your kids for a long time. Okay. And you've been trying to do things to get you to that point, right? Right. It hasn't got you to where you want to be, has it? None. Kimberly, do you know what the definition of insanity is? <laughs> Doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Okay. Kimberly, you know what? You, you, can, you can continue to do the same things that you're doing. Okay. And you know what, Kimberly? There's a chance that when your son turns five, that you can homeschool him. Let, let me ask you this, Kimberly. If you started working with Russell Brunson right now, do you think when your son was five years old, you'd be able to homeschool him? I do. That, are you certain? Yeah. Okay. Well, Kimberly, obviously we need to get you started, don't we? You're right, yes. Okay, does that make, and, and a lot of this, it's just logically walking somebody through that process. I, again, with Kimberly's situation, okay, I, I'm going back to the problem isn't somebody comes up with this question at the end of the conversation. Because if the process has gone, if you've gone through the script correctly and you've gone through this process the right way, you shouldn't run into those questions. Again, I go back to, if there is that much of a chance that you think that I can help you to get to your dreams, your goals, the things that you're passionate about, is this something that you're going to move forward with? You, you are. Okay. And, and as we go through, and, and at this point, again, we, we put a price on homeschooling your kid. You, you, you can't. That's what building an online business that's what it does for people, is it puts them in a position that you're creating something that really does become priceless. That's why we pull out the emotion. That's why we pull out the hot, hot buttons right here. That's why we get them to say, I don't know what I'm doing. That's why I find out how long you've been working on building and growing your business. Were you just looking for information? Are you serious about doing something? Why are you serious? If I pull those hot buttons out right in the beginning, I don't get that question at the end of the conversation. If I've tied that into working with Russell Brunson would make all the difference in the world and I've actually got you to say, yes, working with Russell Brunson would make sure that I'd be able to, uh, to, to homeschool my child. If I got you to that point, I'm not going to run into at the end of our conversation. That's a lot of money because is it a lot of money? Yeah, it is. In comparison, to being able to stay home with your child and, and homeschool them no. is $5,000, $10,000, $25,000. Is it a lot of money? No. It, it, it's really not. Okay. Especially if they know and understand, you know, really, and, and this is something we'll talk about in a future training, but, but really when we break it down, let, let's say somebody puts 10,000 bucks on a credit card. Kimberly, what's your minimum payment on a credit card going to be for $10,000? Um, 250. 250 bucks. Okay. Let's say you got to make a $250 a month payment for six months before credit cards paid off. Okay. How, how much money have you just, how much money have you just paid? For six months? Yeah. 1500 bucks, something like that. Is that, so I've spent 1500 bucks, my money, that, that's what it's cost me, 1500 bucks stretched out over six months to be able to stay home and homeschool my kid. Is that a lot of money? No. It's not. Does that, does that make sense? Does that make sense how to walk through that? And did, did, that, did that answer your question, Kimberly? Totally, yeah. It always goes back though to the, the best thing is to make sure when I run into a concern like that, it is, to, is to really understand that, that the concern isn't that it's $10,000. The concern is I haven't built enough value in what that creates for me for me to pull out my credit card for $10,000. So if I spend the time up front, I never get asked that question at the end. What if I pay this on my credit card and um, you know, Russell doesn't fulfill what I need and then I'm out that money and how am I gonna pay it off? I mean, what if, what if it doesn't work? Sure, Kimberly, and, and, that, and that's a great question. 
Kimberly, let, let me ask you do, you, do you think working with Russell Brunson, what you know about Russell Brunson so far, do you think he's got to where he's, where he's at by not fulfilling? Uh, probably not. Pr pr probably not, huh? And, and, and Kimberly, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, okay, you've got to do your part. Are you willing to do those things that I've asked you to do? Yes. Okay. Kimberly, with Russell Brunson's help and you doing your part, do you see any way at all that you could fail? No. Kimberly, there's only one way that this doesn't work. And that's simply if you don't do your part. If you're willing to tell me that you're willing to do your part, put in the time, the energy, and the effort, the reason we're, we're where we're at is because we've done that. We've proven it. Okay? Uh, the, the, the proof's in the pudding. Okay? You, you see and you understand what Russell has done. If you'll follow those same steps, you're going to be in that same position. Does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. Troy, what questions do you have? What do I have? Um, that, those are two of the primaries right there. I, and, and, and again, I, I can't, I, I'm going to reiterate this, I'm going to stress this. Go back to the introduction. If you're getting asked those questions, okay, and we're going to talk about this in the closed script as well, okay, because even if the setter maybe missed really pulling out these hot buttons, if I get all the way down to the end and I say, Great, how does your name appear on that first card? And they're like, whoa, 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 that's a lot of money, okay? The, the problem is that the closer didn't create enough emotion in the beginning. The setter? And, well, well I, I, I'm talking about very end, okay, because I, I want the closer to create the same amount of emotion right in the beginning, and we're, we'll talk about that when we jump into the close next, okay? But, but if the closer hasn't created that emotion, okay, or if the setter hasn't created that emotion, and the closer hasn't created that emotion, you're gonna get those problems. It's all about building that emotion and tying that emotion back into working with an expert, working with your product, working with your book, working with, the, with our mentors, whatever it is, that, that as we work with them and we, we tie their goals and their dreams, again, we go, we, I'll go back to this, uh, you know, the, the, the whole psychology behind what we do. This, this is where I'm at, okay? This is where I wanna be. If I tie it into the bridge, that we're gonna fill that gap, we don't run into those questions at the end because having this bridge built for me and having somebody help me and walk me across the bridge, it's worth 10 grand because now I've got my RV, now I've got my homeschool. That, 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 that bridge, it's worth a heck of a lot more than 10 grand, isn't it? Ten, all, all of a sudden, 10 grand becomes a bargain, doesn't it? Right. Okay. What other questions, Troy, that, that you guys are experiencing? Uh, again, Remember, Troy and Kimberly are actively calling on the phone. They're calling Russell's leads right now. And so, so these are some really good questions that you guys are going to be facing, you guys are going to be running into um, as, as you get on the phone. What other questions, Kimberly or Troy, do you guys, you guys running into or are you guys facing? I get uh, what exactly is in the, am I going to learn what exactly is in the program? Hey, okay, great, great question, Troy. The, the very best way to answer this question, okay, because as a setter, in the set process, okay? Again, it's not my job to explain what the program is, okay? That is not your responsibility. If we go back to what the setter does, the setter gathers basic information on the prospects, creates emotion, identifies the pain and the goals. That's what the setter's job is. The very best thing for the setter to do, and it creates a cliffhanger for the prospect. Cliffhangers are great because why does every TV show and at the climax of the story and you want to know what's going to happen next so you tune in next week is, isn't that why isn't that why every tv show ends at oh my gosh what's what's going to happen next what's going to happen how, how how is walter white going to get out of this what whatever it is okay the reason that we have those those climaxes is so that i tune in next week so the cliffhanger that i use as a setter is Troy, that is such a great question. What I want you to do is I want you to write that question down about all the details of the business and what we actually do for you. And if you qualify through me, my director will explain all of that to you. Awesome. Okay. If you qualify through me, now, now all of a sudden, again, I, I'm, I'm going back to my bridge here, okay? I, I've got to get past my setter. I've got to get past Troy to be able to talk to Kimberly, who's gonna, who's gonna be the closer on this, on this particular sale, 
I've got to get through them. And so am I going to have any problem talking to somebody about telling them what my credit cards are? I'm, I'm going to tell Troy whatever I want because, because Kimberly, because I've got to get past Troy to be able to talk to Kimberly. If you qualify through me, my director, he'll explain the program to you in detail. We have a process that we go through. Okay, and, and again, because we are looking for the right success stories, uh, we need the people that we work with to follow that process. So we're, we're gonna go through a few things here. And, and, and like I said, if, if it seems like it's a good fit, <clears throat> Miss Lane will answer all the questions for you. Great question, write that down. My director will answer it if you qualify through me. It postures me as the gatekeeper, but it also postures my closer to make sure that my closer is set up as somebody who has the, the right posture, somebody who is an expert, who understands how it all works. My closer is the one that's gonna explain all the information uh, that, that's gonna go through everything in detail. Any other questions? How fast am I gonna make money? You know what, Troy? That, that is a great question. Write that down. My director, he'll cover that with you. Okay. Now, now and, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this in the close as well. But all of a sudden, okay, I've got somebody who's asking me for information about the program, right? Okay. Is it the setter's job to give information? It, it's not. Hey, the, the closer, he's going to give a little bit of information. He's going to provide a solution. And, and Troy, write that question down because we'll talk about that question at, at the end of the close. Because that's something that a lot of people, gosh, I, I'm going to put this on my credit card. How quickly am I going to make money? In the set process, though, I would never, ever answer that. Okay, I, I, I would posture that even if, Troy, you've got the perfect answer because you close deals and you set deals. Okay, you've got the perfect answer in your head. Okay, I would never ever answer a question that's giving out information about the process, about what we do, about how all this works. Your role as a setter is to gather basic information on the prospect, create emotion, identify pain, and the goals. Whenever I get a question about the actual program, gosh, that is set, as a setter, when I'm setting a, a prospect, such a great question, Troy. Write that down. If you qualify through me, my director will explain to you how that works. Does that make sense? Yeah, perfect. Do, 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 do you understand the process? Do you understand why we do that? Because if I give everything away, I, right, right then and there, it, it diminishes the posture of the closer, okay? and it also diminishes my posture as well to be able to gather all the information that I need to gather. I've got to get this information in order to get them over to the closer because without the information, the closer can't do a whole lot with it. I, I've got to go through the process. I've got to go through it step by step. Okay. Kimberly, any questions anymore? Um, no, you've pretty much answered them. I mean, some questions I wrote down in the beginning of this training, mm -hmm. you answered in the training. What? What questions did you write down? And, and let, let's, let's actually, let's, let's go back over just a couple of them that you wrote down. That, because we've gone through the training, um, but, but it would be good to, to just reiterate maybe some things that have kind of been standing out to you. Uh, going through the OPM, um, why are you asking me about my credit? How is that relevant to, to this program okay. of coaching? Okay. Are you getting so personal with my credit cards? Okay, now, great, great. Because that, that, that can be something that, that could be a little bit, I grew up in a house and, and I, my, my parents are still this way, okay? We didn't talk about money, okay? Uh, to, to ask my dad how much money he made, uh, that, that wasn't something that we did. You, you don't talk about money um, with, with grown-ups. And I think a lot of us, have grown up in that culture that that's kind of been ingrained, and so it's a little bit scary. Um, we talk to a lot of middle-aged, like, conservative, you know, kind I, of what would fit that. Ab absolutely, and, and and so so for a lot of people, that can be a little bit of a of a scary thing. What I'm going to tell you, Kimberly, is that that is in your head, not in theirs, and that that's coming through on the phone from you, not from them. That fear 
okay, is coming through from you. And, and, and the reason I say, and th this is gonna sound almost redundant because the answer to this question is, is gonna come right here, okay? And, and this is why it's so critical, okay? Because if I know what Kimberly's hot buttons are and I know that you don't have the knowledge and you have just told me that working with Russell Brunson is gonna make all the difference in the world in your success, when I ask you how much you got available on a credit card, are you gonna tell me what I wanna know? The funny thing is, I've gone through a lot of sets and I've never gotten that question. But, so it must be in my head. <laughs> it, it, is, it is much more in our heads than it ever is in the prospects. And, and so, so Kimberly, as you've gone through it, you've never got that question about, okay, and, and, and do you want to know why? Because you're going through this part right. Because you're going through this process correctly. You, you're explaining this to them. You're pulling out the hot buttons. Um, but, but I remember the first day we came into training and I told you, hey, pull this out of them. You, you, you looked at me like I was crazy. There is no way somebody's going to tell me how much they got available on their credit cards. What are you talking about? Okay. People will. And, and if I pull this information out of them the right way, and Kimberly, probably the very best um, reassurance that anybody could have about going through this process, because I'll, I'll tell you what, th this can be a scary thing to go through to fill this, th this portion of it out with somebody on the phone. This can be really, really scary. The, the problem is, is that we're the ones that are scared because we grew up, I don't talk about money with my parents. I don't ask that the last thing in the world you do is you ask, how much money do you make? How much money do you have available on your credit cards? Okay, that, that's internal, that's us, and that's something that we have to get over. And if we do this part right, we do the introduction, and we go through our blast, and we do that correctly, this becomes just filling out, a, filling out an application. J just like somebody would in mortgages, or for a cell phone, or anything else, it's the exact same process. It's just walking them through it. It's funny to hear you say that. Because, well, just, I've heard Kimberly on the phones a lot, and she does just a great job of building rapport up and pulling those hot buttons out in the beginning. And then I've heard her go through those questions, and it's just she literally goes line by line through it, and never had an issue. Thank you. Ever. I guess if they're going to pour their heart and soul out to you in the beginning about their deepest, darkest dreams and desires, then by the time you get to their money, it will be kind of irrelevant to go through that, right? It doesn't. It does Everything that we do here, there, there's a process to it. The, the, reason, the reason we don't jump into how much you have available on your credit card right, right when we get on the phone is because if I did that, that would be offensive. Well, and I noticed that on, you know, we've done enough of them that what you're talking about, the, that the fears in our minds, when I question it, I can tell it instantly when I question it, then there's a pause on their end. They might still go through it, but I've just planted that seed of doubt and you can feel it on their end. If, if we're thinking it in our head, they're hearing it. I promise you. It, it's, a, it's a sixth sense. Uh, you, you know, I, I, I spent time around horses and, and if you're afraid, uh, Kimberly, if you're afraid, can the horse sense that? Yeah. Oh, the horse knows. Why do you think I go in Russell's library to do my sets and closes because I have to walk around the table because I'm very animated and aggressive in my actions and that's the only way I can let it come through the phone. Uh, <laughs> Otherwise I'm sitting there in my chair. <laughs> I, when, when, whenever I set or close a deal, 90% of the time, uh, th this part here I might sit down because I'm generally filling out a piece of paper, okay? But the rest of it, I'm up, I'm moving around, I'm animated, I have to be. Motion creates emotion. They can feel that. The only thing that I have with somebody on the other end of the phone is my voice, okay? Uh, that, that, that's one drawback from doing face-to-face -face sales. Uh, they can see my, my facial expressions, my hand gestures. <clears throat> if I get up and I walk around and I have that motion, it's going to create emotion with the people on the other end of the phone. And, and I walk them through that. So if you pull out the emotion, you pull out the hot buttons in the beginning, you pull this stuff out right here. You get them to say they don't know what they're doing. You get them to say Russell Brunson or your book or your product is the next best thing to slice bread. Getting through this part 
is very, very easy, very simple. And the only time it becomes hard is if we haven't done, we haven't gone through the steps properly or it's in our head. Okay. Any, anything else that jumped out, Kimberly? You know, just if someone is, um, maybe they have a credit card and they've got, a, they've got availability on a credit card, but they're so adamant that credit card spending is bad. So that's just going more through OPM with them and explaining to them that concept um, is what you, what I got out of this training. And, well, and let, let me, that, that, that's a great question. And let, let me take just a minute and talk a little bit about that. Because some people, that whole idea of OPM is really, really foreign. Um, I, I, I grew up in a household where credit cards, credit cards are bad. Uh, the, you, you know, they, they're, credit cards are the devil. That, that's, that's what, uh, what Adam Sandler would say, or Adam Sandler's mom would say, is credit cards are the devil, okay? In uh, Waterboy? Oh, okay. Kathy yeah, Bates. Yeah, yeah, yes, Kathy Bates would say that, okay? C credit cards, are, uh, I, I grew up in a household like that, okay? But, but at the same token, if, if I sit back and, you know, we, we use the bank idea here, okay? The easiest way for me to explain it is the bank, okay? The, what, what I would do, okay, if somebody isn't grasping it at that point, um, the very best investment opportunity that, that you could talk about with somebody at that point would be real estate, okay? And, and, and I would say something simply along the lines of, you know, let, let me give you another example of how OPM works, okay? Let's say that I'm a real estate investor and I go out and I find a duplex, okay? And the duplex is gonna cost me $300,000 to buy the duplex. And I know that I can get two renters in the duplex and they're each gonna pay me $1,100 a month, okay, for each side of the duplex. And, I, and my mortgage on my duplex is gonna be $1,500 a month, okay? Now, I'm going in debt $300,000, right? Is that good debt or bad debt, Kimberly? In that case, it'd be good debt. How come? Well, it's an investment. I mean, you're about to, you're investing, it's to make you money. Are, are you using your money to do it? No. Whose money are you using? The banks, AKA other people's. The bank, you're using, and Kimberly, what's a credit card? Is that your money? No. Whose money is it? The bank's. It's the bank's money, isn't it? Okay, it's the exact same concept, okay? And Kimberly, let, let's say that we put that investment, that $10,000, okay? And, and this would be something that we'd probably talk about a little bit more in the close, but, but, but let, let's say we take that $10,000 and let, let's say you've got a $200 a month payment on that credit card now. Okay, and Kimberly, let, let's, say that, let's say that all you do with Russell Brunson is you learn how to make $400 a month every month for the rest of your life. Was that $10,000 a good investment or a bad investment? It was a good investment. How come? Because the return was so, so much greater. It cost me $200, I'm making $400. It's a good return on my money, right? I, I, I just put 200 bucks in my pocket without using any of my own money, right? What if that real, that real estate investor flops and he doesn't win? And Kimberly, that is a great question. Do you think working with Russell Brunson, there's any way at all that you wouldn't be able to make $400 a month? I guess he did just win a Ferrari. Yeah, he, he did, okay. <laughs> but, and, and you know, Kimberly, working with Russell Brunson, that's the safety net that we all dream about when going into business. Okay, he's the safety net that makes sure that we don't flop. So, so sometimes when I'm talking about OPM with somebody, if, if the whole idea of banks doesn't click with them, um, you, like, you know, using a real estate investor, using a duplex, and you know, j just put, th throwing out some basic numbers, kind of like what I just did. Gosh, I, I, I've got a $300,000 you know, uh, mortgage, it cost me $1,500 a month, and each side of the duplex is paying me $1,100 a month. Good investment or bad investment? Most real estate investors would love to have a $700 a month positive cash flow out of their real estate investments, wouldn't they? Yeah. Good investment, okay? Working with Russell Brunson, do you think there's any way at all that you wouldn't be able to make $200 a month, $400 a month, $1,000 a month? No. He's, he's the safety net. He's what makes sure you don't flop. Does that make sense? Yep. Alrighty.